So at this point, we've uh, released the second version of the project with some new features. Amazon will approve it pretty quickly. And this whole time with Amazon, I've been targeting uh, Android devices. I could have also gone to developer.android.com and went on to the Google Play App Store. Here I'm on the Amazon App Store, just another venue to release my app. Well, let's say I wanted to then start to target iOS devices, uh, iPhones, iPads, and so forth, and I wanted to target Windows devices. I wanted to get on the Windows App Store. Uh, Taco has the ability for us to target multiple platforms. The problem comes in when we want to target iOS, and we've said this before, so this is a little reiteration, but if I did Taco uh, platform add iOS to my project, it would attempt to add those features of the project, but it wouldn't fully work because I don't have the required SDK, the software development kit. Early on when we did Taco, when we set up all of Taco, when we installed Taco, we had Taco install Rex Android. We installed the requirements to create Android apps. So here it may say it's adding the iOS project to my app, but then when I go to Taco build iOS, I'll get errors because it'll say you don't have the the requirements for iOS. And if I were to run taco install rex iOS, that would fail as well because I'm missing another requirement. But here technically, my project is starting to be set up also for iOS, simply with taco platform add iOS. And taco build iOS will fail because I don't have the full requirements. So the point is, if you really are going to do iOS development, you need to do it on a Mac, um, on Mac hardware. So right there, a big old red error. You don't have the proper runtime and such. Taco install Rex iOS. The following platform will be skipped because they aren't supported for your operating system iOS. Nothing to install. So the end. I can't use I can't use iOS um, software on uh, on on Windows. So if I get the hardware of an actual Mac, then I can do all of the things we've done previously: Taco install iOS Rex, Taco build iOS, Taco build release iOS, all of that stuff. But um, I don't have, or I don't want to, buy a brand new hardware, a brand new laptop, just to do these apps. So the way we can do this, let's try this. Go to your web browser and go to uh, phonegap.com. Phonegap.com is another variation of Cordova. This is Adobe's version. What Adobe has done different is they've added one extra step. They've added the, uh, a more complete build step. This would be very similar to what we saw previously. Instead of Taco build iOS, we would have PhoneGap build iOS. Whereas we had Taco plugin add camera, we would type uh, PhoneGap plugin add camera. And that all sounds exactly the same. What's the big difference? The big difference is Adobe's build. If you let's see, they have it in a couple of different places. From the home page, if you see build, take the pain out of compiling locally. Get App Store ready apps without the headache of maintaining native SDKs. So that's that, you know, one gigabyte of software that I need for iOS, and another, well, one gigabyte for Android or so, and then like four gigabytes for iOS, and another whatever gigabytes for Windows. Well, here with PhoneGap Build, which is at build.phonegap.com, the short answer is that 
simply upload your code and Adobe builds it for all the platforms. It does it all for you. You don't need an actual Mac to compile it. So I'm going to go through this process. You can do so too as well because there are free versions of it and there are paid versions. Adobe needs to make money so they've got a non-paid version. If I scroll down you can see how much it costs. Choose your plan. The free plan. One private app or unlimited open source apps. A maximum app size of 50 megabytes. Uses the core Cordova plugins. Uses third-party plugins like the one we just made. Are you able to upload a plugin? No. Collaborators unlimited. So this one's free. What this one is saying is you need to provide an open source repository. Basically, you need to upload your code over to GitHub or other such public places like that. Well, that's literally public. Everyone's going to see your code. Uh, you may not want that. So this gives you one private app with the free plan. If you go with the paid plans, you can have 25 private apps. These different sizes, prices, completely free, starting at $9.99 per month. So $10 a month to have the features to be able to make, to have these private apps. I don't want my code to be visible by everyone. Or maybe I am building an app that I'm fine that it's open source and everyone can see it. So the free one with unlimited ones works just fine. How many of you currently have an Adobe, uh, an Adobe ID account? Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go through the process briefly of creating one, and I'll create it with gibberish, and it'll let me do it, and just to show you how it, how it works. And we'll be able to upload our code with a little change, and then you'll see here, Adobe will build my, my app for me. It'll build the Android version, the, the iOS version, and the Windows version. So all this work that I've done so far, it can then go to the next level of creating the iOS version. So I'll go with completely free. It asks me to sign in. I'm going to set it up as if I need a brand new one. So I'll go with the Get an Adobe ID button instead. First name, last name, email, password. John Student, jstudent at students.biz. Make up a password. U.S. area, I don't want to stay informed, so that's all I really need. I'm creating an Adobe ID and a free ID will let me get the basic free version of the of a, of a phone get build. So I may want to get back to this, so I'll take a quick photo and then I'll click sign up. Alright, so the Adobe Build dashboard shows that I have apps, plugins, docs, etc. These docs are pretty much what you would get out of cordova.apache.org. There's also a blog where they keep you up to date, facts and support, plugins, although they're changing this. So apps, your apps. I can do open source, I can do private. Under open source, I paste in my GitHub repo address and then it pulls the code in from github and then it gets started under private i need to upload a zip file so to set this up it doesn't tell you on that screen it should but to set this up what you need to do is a zip file of your project all you need is the www portion of it so what i'm going to do out of my current project I'm going to get a copy of the WW folder to my desktop. And actually, what you also need is a copy of the config XML file in the WW folder. So here in Taco, we have the config outside on the root level. But uh, phone get build needs only your WW folder. But you must have then your config file inside. And so I made a copy of it on my desktop to not change my original. 
build wants phone cap build wants a zip file. So in Windows we can make a zip file of that whole folder by right-clicking um, send to compressed or zipped folder. It will process it. It can be called anything you want. MySDCE. So now I've got the HTML stuff, the CSS stuff, the JavaScript stuff, my images, and the config XML file bundled into one compact zip file. And back here on Adobe Build, I can choose to upload that zip. It'll upload it, it'll scan it, it'll check things out. Here's my description inside the config file. It gives it an, a unique app ID number in the Adobe system. There's my version that I just wrote. This is owned by me. I just made that account. It's going to be targeting iOS, Android, and Windows. Now these versions here are not the same as the versions that are out in the real world. Obviously there's Android 7 at the moment and that says 5 and that says iOS 4 and there's Android 10 and this is Windows 4. Obviously Windows 4 never existed. Uh, so those, those version numbers are internal to Cordova. It's version 4.4 0.1 of the Cordova framework. It's version 5.2.1 of the Cordova Android framework. It's not Android OS version 5. <clears throat> so don't worry about those numbers. The source is a zip. Last built one minute ago. Um, I have these extra options here that I don't really need to deal with. This is not debugging anymore. I've already done debugging previously. So I'll skip that, but what I want to do is I'm ready to build. I've got one free private app. I would need to delete it if I no longer wanted to work with that app, because I have a limit of one. So I'm ready to build. Go ahead and do that. What's that? I have to look that up. I'm not exactly sure what that one does. But it's, I think it's still part of the whole debugging aspect of things. All right, so it built, and I get a QR code there that I can uh, open up on my device to install testing purposes on my device. And it shows here that I've got um, iOS, um, Android, and Windows versions built. Two of them are blue and one is red. So... Um, I, I can see that iOS didn't, didn't, didn't finish building, or there was some sort of problem. So if you either click on those, or you click on the name of the project, this can tell you in more detail. Uh, the Windows version blue worked, and I have the AP, APPX file type. So that, that, one's, that one's an actual file type. I can install it on my Windows 8 and up. And then here I've got the APK version. So what I would have gotten out of Taco build release, I get the APK version. These are still not release ready, however. And then I get iOS error. Uh, again here, there is still a, um, a stumbling block, even though Adobe can take, can do the compiling and such, you need a key. You need uh, the developer certificate. Whereas for iOS, obviously, I just need to select my JKS file, rebuild it, and it's the full final version of my Android file. For Windows, very similar. I need to provide the, the JKS, the key file, the developer certificate, and then for iOS as well. So here on this error, you must provide a signing key. Find out how to fix this. And this is going to document it, and it's going to tell you you do need it, an Apple developer's uh, key. And so this is, you are going to need to pay, purchase the $99 a year developer's account. Whereas with Android, 
we created our own JKS file, our own developer's key. We typed the commands, it created it, we're a developer. For iOS, you do need to pay the $99 to Apple, even if you're going to give away your apps. You'll get the P12 file, and that's what Adobe Build wants. Then you can rebuild it, and then it'll work. So here, there's no way out of the $99 fee. For Windows, I think it's $28 to create your, your key, one-time fee, and then you can create the Windows version. For uh, Android, completely free uh, until you're ready to publish the app on Google Play. So if I were to add my key, you know, I would browse for my file. Here's my JKS file. Uh, title and alias. Uh, what's the difference here? Alias is the alias that I have there. I'll just put the same one. Submit extension JKS in our match expected key store. Um, no file. Extension JKS in our match the expected key store. Oh, okay. The expected key store. It's expecting it to be called dot key store. The same key store file, the same JKS file, but it wants it as dot key store. Okay, so it's going to use my key store file, my JKS file, but it wants it as dot j dot key store. It's locked. I need to unlock it with my passwords. The key will be, the key will be unlocked for one hour. It's not locked anymore. We can rebuild that. But in general, yeah, I'm going a little fast through it, but in general, we're seeing here Adobe has a version where it can compile things for you. And it did it there. I put my password in, it built it, now this is the final release ready version. The Windows one is not release ready, I haven't signed it as a developer, neither is the iOS. So I would need to get developer keys. developer.windows.com, I get it there. developer.apple.com, I get it there. And you saw the process of me submitting it, putting my password, building, and then you've got, you're gonna get a .ipa file for for uh, Apple, and then you would do the same thing related over on the Apple App Store. You would create a listing. You would you would need graphics. You would need descriptions. You would need to submit it. And then with Apple, it's a little bit more of a stringent process. And then your app would be available eventually, and people on their iPhones, on their iOS devices, would be able to download your project. So throughout the whole course, we couldn't quite test Taco Run iOS because we just don't have the hardware. You need Mac hardware for that, but we've been testing it on on Android devices, virtual devices, and that's close enough. To get the full effect, you would need a real Mac running it on a real iPhone, a real iPod Touch or iPad or whatever, and um, fully test it that way. The, the closest thing is that Adobe Build can do it for you. So you have one private app. Every other app that you work here, you need to provide the code from a GitHub repository. Um, you could somehow possibly find a way to have one app at a time. Have Adobe build your one app. If you've only got one at a time, somehow there might be a way for you to use one app at a time.
So today's big idea was to add new features to the project, device detection features as well, compile it again, submit it again to our app store, and then also look at what are the alternatives to deploy for other platforms if you don't have the hardware. There's also these other features that I haven't quite explored, but there's the, these are known as Mac in cloud. That is that you can you can rent a Mac in the cloud, macincloud.com. So you don't you don't need to get a real Mac. You can rent the services of a real Mac so that you can actually compile your apps that way, not for free, of course. So for example, one dollar per hour prepaid thirty dollars all of this stuff here access to tools and, and apps such as Xcode, Xamarin, etc you know, Cordova, etc. So these are ways that you could do it as well you get a 48 hour trial there just briefly you know buy it here compile your app, put it up on the App Store or use the Adobe Build version. <clears throat> so any questions on Adobe uh, PhoneGap Build or Mac and Cloud? You may be able to run things with virtualization, but it's often a little tricky to run Mac OS on a non-Mac hardware. The opposite, though, if you've got a Mac, you can run um, Windows software on a Mac a little easier than you can run Mac software on Windows. On the last day of class on Thursday, what we're going to do is we're going to start to then look at aspects of marketing. We're going to look at a little bit of social media. It's very valuable nowadays to be able to reach an audience, and we can do so for free with social networks. So we'll touch on one social network and to reach an audience. It'll be the last day of class. Any general questions on anything of today? So we'll wrap up at this point, have a little lab time. Hopefully you've gotten up to this point and you have an app that you can show off on, on Amazon. And um, we're getting closer to the end. If anyone needs any help, call me over.